Okay, back, I'm in my backyard, and now we're going to talk about uh, the four different groups of plants. There are mosses, there are ferns, gymnosperms, sometimes you call them conifers, and angiosperms, or flowering plants. And I'm going to show you each one of those four groups in my yard and talk about them a little bit. I'm going to start with my swimming pool uh, to talk about what defines plants generally. Plants. Uh, for the purposes of our class are what we call land plants or terrestrial plants you know and each of those four groups fits within uh, land plants or terrestrial plants what i want to show you here is this green swimming pool and i was swimming in it last night and walked along the bottom and there was just a carpet of green and that is what we call algae algae plants are evolved from green algae originally and when i was stepping on the bottom of my pool that that layer of green material it was really slippery and slidey that was uh, algae so autotrophic photosynthetic organisms that live in water is not what we're talking about but the plants that we are going to talk about today were evolved originally from uh, algae green algae that transferred over time from water onto land surfaces and we're going to talk about the characteristics that allowed them to do that uh, and to become more sophisticated and to solve the problems of trying to survive on a dry terrestrial planet or even wet areas on the planet. So let's go over here. We'll talk about the most primitive group of plants. We have to go to a place in the yard that's pretty wet and more shaded. That's where a lot of these uh, mosses like to grow. So this is a part of the yard that's usually pretty shaded because of the tree cover and it gets a lot of, of water from the sprinklers. And you can see right here, if I move these dandelions away, you can see this just uh, shallow carpet of moss right here. And mosses do photosynthesis, but they don't have any vascular tissue, which means that they can't capture, they don't have roots that capture water and nutrients that then tra are transported up to leaves. They don't have any of that. So typically mosses are, uh, very humble and they're very close to the ground where each cell can catch, capture water and nutrients since they don't have vascular tissue to transport any of those nutrients. And mosses are really abundant when you get into rainforests, area where, areas where there's a lot of water, a lot of moisture, but there are also lots of mosses in deserts. Not a lot, but there are mosses in deserts. And um, what they'll do is, I wish I could show you, if we went out in the desert and I had my water bottle there, you would see these dry mosses and you'd think they're dead. And then all you have to do is pour water on them and they instantly within 30 seconds will green up, start to photosynthesize, and then they'll dry out and go dormant again. They'll do that over and over and over again. You can imagine if we went, uh, we were desiccated, we were dried out, there's no way we could come to life, back to life. But desert mosses can do that over and over again. Now we're gonna go and talk about the second group of plants, uh, ferns. And starting with the uh, ferns, we get a new characteristic, vascular tissue, that allows them, once they colonize land, to begin to stand up and reach up and compete for light and to escape enemies. By, by growing taller and taller. So the only reason we have to have ferns in the yard is because my wife and I planted some this uh, last spring because that's what she wanted for her birthday. So we have two ferns, this lighter green one and then this darker green one. This dark green one barely survived. Uh, so you can see now these are not a press, they're not flat on the ground. Um, they're actually beginning to grow up. They're beginning to get vertical. And the reason they're able to do that is because in the soil they have roots that are capturing water and nutrients. And then they have these leaves, which are solar panels that are designed to capture sunlight. And in these stems that go from roots up to the leaves, there are cells that conduct water and nutrients it's called uh, xylem and phloem. Um, and that's the vascular tissue. And once plants evolved vascular tissue, the most primitive plants that did this, some of them were these ferns, uh, then they could start to grow up. 
that was the, the first major innovation of plants that allowed them to successfully colonize uh, and spread across land. So the third group of plants that I want to talk about are right here. The gymnosperms, or conifers as we sometimes call them. And I have, we have uh, three of these tall conifer trees in the yard and then a ponderosa over there. These are really common up in our mountain systems. And these group of organisms, these conifers produce seeds. And the mosses and the ferns don't produce seeds. They reproduce uh, through spores. So yeah, the gymnosperms were the first group of plant organisms that developed the ability to produce seeds and uh, we call them conifers because they produce their seeds in cones. And this is a female cone right here in my grass and a seed will be produced in here and it has a little wing like the fruit of a maple and the wind will carry it away. There have been times where I found uh, cones that it actually break apart at maturity and I'll just have a, a broken cone and I'll just throw it up and there'll be thousands of these helicopter seeds just floating away in the wind. It's, it's really, really amazing. So I think most of you are familiar with these, these conifers, these gymnosperms. Anything that produces a cone, a seed in a cone is what we call a gymnosperm or a conifer. And then the plant group that you're going to be most familiar with are the flowering plants or the angiosperms. They also have vascular tissue. They produce seeds but they produce their seeds in flowers. So that's why you call them flowering plants. And they're the most abundant plant group on the planet. Uh, we have maybe 800 species of gymnosperms and estimates are there's 250 to 500,000 species of flowering plants. So they are far more diverse and abundant on the earth than uh, any other plant group. They're the most successful plant group. And so an interesting question is, what is it about making flowers and producing seeds inside of fruits that makes these uh, plants so successful? So that cone flowers, what's these trees, this flowering cherry, almost all the other plants in my yard, 95% of the plants in my yard, maybe 99% of the plants in our yard are flowering plants. And that's true in the world too, anywhere you go. The great biodiversity of the tropical forest, the Amazon, that's driven by angiosperms, flowering plants. Got blackberries, strawberries. I'm gonna take you to my garden. We've got this plum tree that drops plum fruits on our patio that makes a big mess. Not our favorite. This is one of my favorite trees right here. A really beautiful honey locust that provides like an umbrella providing shade in our backyard. And these black-eyed Susans, just beautiful. We try to create some beauty within our yard. Got, here's our tomato patch, all flowering plants. Basil, you can see the flowers of the basil coming out. I try to pinch them off so we can keep the basil leaves coming. Look at these bell peppers. I got flowers right here. They're getting pollinated by the pollinators and then they're gonna develop in these beautiful bell peppers. Got the most incredible cucumbers this year. We got these seeds from Japan last summer. And here are the flowers, the yellow flowers. And then you look underneath and my kids will eat these just raw. They'll just come out here and chew on because they're so good. Uh, and these grasses, you wouldn't maybe think that these are flowering plants, but these, these are flowers that then develop seeds. So grasses are flowering plants. And you got these you got weeds in the garden too. That, produce tiny, tiny flowers that are hard to see that then make fruits that, that produce seeds. Kohlrabi, we've got a patch of potatoes that's getting just hammered by some leaf chewers. Our grape plants, all of these are flowering plants. Oh, and I'll end with, okay, the most conspicuous example of, you can see the pollinators fluttering around. There's a bee right here in this sunflower, it's beautiful flowers, these compound flowers. Um, and again, these will turn into, in some cases they're already almost there, petals have fallen. These will develop into sunflowers, which are fruits with the, with the seed inside.